So here we have Colonel Robert Lee Wolverton, known as Bull to friends. Only a few hours after this photo was taken on June 5th, 1944, this American paratrooper would die during his night drop into Normandy on D-Day. He was the commander of 3rd Battalion in the 506th PIR of the 101st Airborne Division. His mission was to jump into saint cum du -Mont. You may notice that his unit is in the same regiment that Easy Company from Band of Brothers was in, the 506. Despite being killed before he even landed on French soil, his legacy endured. He is very well known for a prayer he spoke to the 750 men in his battalion hours before their D-Day drop behind enemy lines. That prayer is as follows. Men, I am not a religious man, and I don't know your feelings in this matter, but I am going to ask you to pray with me for the success of the mission before us. I would like you to get down on your knees and pray, and while you do this, do not look down, but look up, with heads held high to the sky. God Almighty, in a few short hours, we will be in battle with the enemy. We do not join battle afraid. We do not ask favors or indulge, but ask that, if you will, use us as your instrument for the right and an aid in returning peace to the world. We do not know or seek what our fate will be. We only ask this, that if die we must, that we will die as men would die, without complaining, without pleading, and safe in the feeling that we have done our best for what we believed was right. O oh Lord, protect our loved ones and be near us in the fire ahead and with us now as we each pray to you. And as the men all rose to their feet, he announced that they shall have a reunion in a hotel in Kansas City on the first D-Day anniversary after the war's end. Dozens of his men did show up for this reunion, but he never did. It is known that his parachute's canopy became snagged on the limbs of an apple tree. As he dangled helplessly only a few feet from the ground, German troops found him struggling to free himself from his harness. He was machine gunned to death and then later used as target practice and bayonet practice. When his body was finally recovered by American troops, their beloved commander had over 150 bullet holes and bayonet wounds in his body. The following is an account from one of his men, Joe Bayerl. Together with a number of prisoners, he was being held in a POW field near Les Farage since dawn. Across a dirt track not far from his position was an orchard. Hanging from two apple trees were a couple of paratroopers. Their bodies were swollen and bulged as if they were about to explode. German reinforcements coming from the direction of Houseville were using them for target practice. And with each burst of fire, the blood caked bodies twisted in the trees and one man's head was nearly severed. One of Joe's guards came over and gleefully told him that the nearest body was a colonel. Then the penny dropped and Joe realized that it was Colonel Wolverton. He then began to cry and the feeling of loss was overwhelming. And that is an excerpt from their book, Tonight We Die As Men, written by Ian Gardner and Roger Day as they recount the story following his death. In the book, Sergeant Ralph Bennett also talks about his colonel. Wolverton talked to us just like he was one of the guys, 
and seemed genuinely concerned at the prospect of us all not getting back alive. No one spoke during the whole prayer and you could have heard a pin drop. Afterwards, he dismissed us and we returned to our own tents. Of course, his remains were eventually recovered and sent back home to America, buried with full honors in the cemetery of his beloved United States Military Academy at West Point. He was awarded the Legion of Merit postmortemously. Colonel Sink himself wrote about him. He was loved sincerely by all of his men and officers. I consider him the best battalion commander in the regiment, and I am sure that General Taylor ranked him similarly within the division. He was a fine person. There is a hologram image of him giving a pre-mission briefing in the staging area at the D-Day Experience Simulator and right across from the very apple orchard where he was killed on D-Day lies a memorial dedicated to him in St. Cum du Mont. And oh, you know, the fellas loved that colonel. And I think that colonel loved his men. There was just a, a relationship there that, was, that bound us together. How important that we love our preacher, love his family, love one another, love our leaders, appreciate the ch church building, ch appreciate our opportunity to serve. We have so much to be thankful for. I tell you folks, this was quite an emotional research project for me, reading through all these articles and finding all these sources. And just wow, what an amazing, sad, emotional story that is of a true American hero and to die so horribly after giving such an amazing speech and inspiring all his men who continued the fight without him. You know, it really just is an amazing story that more people should know. And I feel better knowing this tale now than I did before. So as always guys, I will catch you all on the flip side. God bless you all.